Roughly 300,000 years ago, Homo sapiens began a remarkable journey. Along the way, we achieved amazing things and became the guardians of this planet that we call home. Despite our achievements, we bore witness to and participated in many devastating and incomprehensible atrocities. We arrive at the present day, and although the world is significantly better in almost every measurable way, we can't help but feel that something isn't quite right. There's a tension in the air that we can't dismiss. The world seems polarized and on edge. Humanity will be quick to point the finger and label one another as evil. The truth is though, that very few in this world are inherently bad. There is however, someone who is rotten to the core, who takes and takes and takes and gives nothing but pain in return. This person has been behind the bloodshed of many wars. He is the puppeteer behind corrupt governments, and he's the devil that stares back at you smiling as you doom scroll your life away. He most certainly is the cause behind this AI race to the bottom that we find ourselves in the thick of. You probably haven't heard of him. His name is Moloch. The origins of Moloch vary, but it's generally rooted in the concept of a pagan god associated with child sacrifice. The deity is often depicted as having a human body with a bull's head, typically surrounded by flames. A more contemporary interpretation can be found in Allen Ginsberg's 1956 poem, How, where Moloch is portrayed as the embodiment of industrial civilization. In 2014, Scott Alexander wrote an essay titled Meditations on Moloch. In this essay, he examines Ginsberg's Ginsberg's poem and illustrates how Moloch still manifests in the world today. Fundamentally, Moloch personifies harmful incentives. He places humanity in no-win situations and compels them to engage in games with no winners and no way to stop the competition. The brilliance of Ginsberg's poem and Alexander's essay lie in their ability to give form to this metaphysical force. They give us a way to visualize this intangible entity that drives ordinary humans to commit despicable acts. What causes government corruption? Why do average soldiers with families perpetrate wartime atrocities? Why do we build nuclear weapons despite their devastating potential? In these cases, the individuals involved are rarely inherently evil. More often than not, Moloch is the driving force, an insidious presence that locks us onto a path of destruction and convinces us that there's no escape. Let me show you. In recent years, platforms like Instagram have evolved from being a place to share daily snaps to a place to showcase your most stunning and flawless images. What we've seen steadily increase alongside these images is the use of beauty filters. Now, in the beginning, beauty filters weren't really used, but once a few people started using them, these people started receiving more attention, whether it be from potential romantic partners, followers, modeling agencies, or sponsors. To keep up with these trend-setting influences, ordinary users started using beauty filters to attract the same level of attention. If they didn't, they wouldn't be able to compete with the other users that did use beauty filters, and as a result, would miss out on the DMs, followers, likes, and all the influence that comes with those things. Essentially, what happened is we took a common value that we all share, namely our ordinary human looks, and started replacing this with digitally airbrushed alterations, all in the name of outcompeting each other and benefiting ourselves. Unfortunately, this has created an environment where everyone is increasingly unhappy. Low self-esteem, insecurities, body dysmorphia, depression, and anxiety are the unintended consequences even for those who appear to have it all. One might think that the solution is to simply stop using beauty filters, but Moloch's influence prevents this from happening. His power is so overwhelming that anyone attempting to break free from the game risks being left behind and overshadowed by everyone else. So long as this cycle continues, everyone's self-esteem suffers and our perception of beauty gets more and more warped. It's important to note that no one in this chain is inherently evil. And they would probably all agree that this is a terrible situation for humanity to be in. But still, they can't stop perpetuating this destructive cycle because to do so is just too costly. Liv Bore articulates this dilemma perfectly in her video, Moloch, The Beauty Wars, which offers a deeper understanding of how Moloch 
it continues to shape our perceptions of beauty. If you get the chance, I highly recommend that you watch that video. Now that you're familiar with Moloch's insidious presence, you'll likely see his influence everywhere, whether it be social media, dating, sports, stock trading, or any other highly competitive field. In Scott Alexander's meditations on Moloch, we discover that government corruption, scientific challenges, and ineffective prison sentences are all outcomes of Moloch's workings. Here's an explanation from Scott addressing Moloch's perverse incentives within the education system. Essentially, a student's incentive is to attend the most prestigious college to improve their chances of being hired, regardless of how much they learn. Employers have an incentive to recruit students from top tier colleges, so they can justify their decisions to their superiors, regardless of how good the prospect is. Colleges, in turn, are driven to do whatever it takes to gain more prestige, so they can get more funding, whether or not this actually helps students. This cycle results in significant waste and subpar education. Essentially, the whole P's get degrees thing is just Moloch in action. Again, no one in this chain is particularly evil and everyone agrees that this isn't the best way to deliver education or hire people. But real change is unlikely so long as Moloch insists on everyone following their own poor incentives. By now, I hope you have a clearer understanding of Moloch's nature and how he fosters destructive incentives that ultimately make life harder for humans. But there's one specific area that demands our attention and it could quite possibly be the hardest battle that we have against Moloch yet. As the race to develop advanced AI accelerates, competition among tech giants, governments, and research institutions gets more intense. And where there's competition, Moloch isn't far away. So how exactly does Moloch meddle with the AI landscape? Well, firstly, he gets us playing the game. He does this by showing us the prize and how it's just within reach of anyone daring enough to grab it. We see this with the success of ChatGPT, which gained 1 million users in its first five days and 100 million users by January making it the fastest growing app in history. Companies and governments see the rewards that could be gained if they can harness this technology and therefore start dipping their hands into the AI cookie jar. And in doing so, Moloch's grip tightens. The next step is to show a way to beat the competition. So how do you beat a company that's developing AI? Well, you make a better AI and you make it before someone else does. In a research paper by Microsoft released in March, they expressed their belief that GPT-4 can reasonably be viewed as an early version of an artificial general intelligence system. Microsoft have established the benchmark. Early AGI is comparable to the first use of beauty filters on social media that we discussed earlier in the video. Now, the only way for competitors to beat each other is to develop their own more advanced AGI. And so the cycle begins. A race to the bottom where each individual company is perversely incentivized to create more advanced AGI. If they don't, they risk the other side leaving them in the dust. Meanwhile, the unintended consequences for humanity grow, and although they're yet to be seen, they're likely to include job displacement, inequality, global collapse, and in the worst case, misaligned superintelligence. Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Google, in a recent 60 Minutes interview, expresses his fear of what we can now recognize as the AI Moloch. I think one of the things we need to be careful when it comes to AI is avoid what I would call race conditions, where people working on it across companies, etc., so get caught up in who's first that we lose you know, the potential pitfalls and downsides to it. Again, it's important to note that no one in this link wants to see the world burn and they all agree that this isn't an ideal situation. But once again, Moloch locks everyone into the game. These companies are unable to quit even though they know the outcomes are bad for everyone including themselves. Now, the reason that the AI situation is scarier compared to Moloch's other interferences is that unlike beauty filters or even education, AI is an existential threat. Prioritizing speed and profits over ethics and safety is a surefire way of ending that journey that we began 300,000 years ago. This is because with so many people racing to gain AI dominance, the risk of AI terrorism, AI pathogens, AI cyber warfare, AI misinformation, and AI superintelligence 
all increase. Alietza Yudkowsky, a leading AI researcher, sums up the consequences of letting Moloch win perfectly on the Lex Friedman podcast. It's the first time you fail at aligning something much smarter than you are, you die, and you do not get to try again. So, with that being said, what are we gonna do? Although Moloch is formidable, humans have developed a range of strategies to counteract his influence. MIT physicist and AI researcher Max Tegmark is optimistic about defeating Moloch. Moloch is not a new arrival on, on the scene either. We humans have developed a lot of collaboration mechanisms to help us fight back against Moloch through various kinds of constructive collaboration. Have you seen in history their uh, examples where it's possible to pause yes, the Moloch? Absolutely. He goes on to mention agreements among biologists regarding gene editing as instances where humanity triumphed over Moloch's grip. In line with this belief, Max is leading a petition for AI researchers to halt progress for six months. The initiative aims to pause Moloch's influence and give the world time to plot the best course of action instead of engaging in this suicide race. Independent AI researcher Dave Shapiro offers a technical solution to Moloch which can be integrated into AI systems. He calls these heuristic imperatives. These imperatives are a set of principles that can be incorporated into AGI systems that will push us towards utopia. They are 1. Reduce suffering in the universe, 2. Increase prosperity in the universe, 3. Increase understanding in the universe. Shapiro stresses that AGI must implement all three imperatives in order to create a safety net that keeps other AGI systems in check, even if us humans do fail to collaborate against Moloch. A final frontier against AI Moloch is to establish international norms and regulations. This ensures that companies and governments are on the same page, playing by the same rules, and are kept in check from submitting to Moloch's influence. Elon Musk, a strong advocate for AI safety, agrees, and when interviewed, had this to say. Uh, so anyway, so I think I think we should uh, take this seriously, and, and we should have um, uh, a, a regulatory agency. I think it needs to start with um, a group that initially seeks uh, insight uh, into AI, uh, then solicits opinion from industry, uh, and then pro has proposed rulemaking, and then those rules, you know, uh, will probably, hopefully, grudgingly be accepted by uh, the, the major players in, in, in AI, and, um, and we, we, I think we'll have a better chance of, of um, advanced AI being beneficial to humanity in that circumstance. It goes without saying that actually implementing these strategies is far harder than just talking about them. Nevertheless, these approaches offer the most promising path to defeating the AI Moloch. I would love to hear everyone's thoughts, so please pop them in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.